using a spreadsheet for a linear data fit. For this video, we will use the data set relating GPA to sleep from the linear regression video. We are also using Microsoft Excel. Most of the things will work in Google Sheets as well, but Google Sheets has absolutely horrible creation of scatter plots. The requirements for arranging data for multiple plots are absurd, and unless you are willing to write JavaScript, it has no way to connect the points on a plot with lines. Therefore, we are using Excel. Let's start by entering the values. Hours of sleep, 7.5, 4, 6, 5, 8. GPA, 3.7, 3.1, 3.31, 3.32, 3.33, 3.68. If you are in a hurry and don't want all of the statistics, you can do the following. Select the data in headings, choose insert and select a scatter graph with points only. Then double click the chart. Choose add chart element, trend line, linear. Double click the trend line, then under the trend line options, click on display equation on chart. That sequence of steps will give you the trend line with equation quick and easy. We could clean up the graph quite a bit, but we have other things to do. Excel and Sheets has a built-in function, LineEst, which calculates quite a few of the statistical quantities we need. Using this function is a bit unusual because it is an array function. Start by selecting a five row by two column block of cells. Then enter equals LineEst, parentheses, select the Y values, comma, Select the X values, comma, true, comma, true, close paren. Then while holding down the control and shift keys, hit enter or return. We need to label some of these values so we remember what they are. The first two are the slope and intercept of the best fit line. The next two are the standard errors for the slope and intercept. The last two on the second column are the degrees of freedom and the sum of the squares of the residuals. We will next choose a confidence level and calculate T. The confidence level is 80%. As before, T is calculated by equals T.INV.2T of parentheses 1 minus conf level parentheses comma and degree of freedom. Now that we have t, we can calculate lambda for the slope and intercept. Lambda is just t times the standard error. We use the F4 shortcut to make the reference to t absolute. Again, depending on what we need, we may be done. However, in this case, we also want to plot the confidence bounds, so we need to add a few things. We need the mean of x, the count, and the sum of the squares of the difference between x sub i and x bar. First, let's add some stat calculations, the sum for each column, the count, and the mean. I just enter them for the first column and then drag right. Next, the square of the difference between x sub i and x bar. Again, we use an absolute reference for the mean, a quick drag down for the values, and a quick drag over for the sum. We can now calculate the root mean square of the residuals, which is the square root of the sum of the squares of the residuals, divided by the degrees of freedom, both of which Linest calculated for us. With all of these quantities, we can calculate the functional and observational bounds. We'll first set up a table of x values that spans our data set. We'll use the method of filling in the first two values and dragging down. Now we'll add the headings for the other columns, best fit, func high, Funk low, data high, and data low. Best fit is easy. It's just x times the slope, absolute reference, plus the intercept, absolute reference, then drag down. All of the confidence bounds have the same form, the best fit line plus or minus some sample standard error times t. We'll enter the formula once and then use some drag and edit tricks to get the other three and then drag down. The functional upper bound is the best fit line absolute column reference plus t absolute reference times the RMSE absolute reference times the square root of 1 over the count absolute reference plus the square of x absolute column reference minus x bar absolute reference. 
divided by the sum of the squares of x minus x bar absolute reference. We'll drag this over two cells and edit the two cells. In Funk Low, we'll change the plus to minus. In Data High, we'll add 1 under the square root. We'll then drag Data High over 1 and change the plus to minus. If everything worked, we can just drag down our values. We now need to plot everything. We could add our data to our original plot, but it's much quicker to plot our new values and add the original points. To plot the new data, select all of them with the title, and insert XY scatter with smooth lines. Now edit the chart with Select Data. Add a new series and title it Data Points. Select the original X values and then the Y values. Change the scale on the X and Y axes so you can see the points, and then double click on the Data Points series. Change the line to No Line, and change the marker to an X in a decent size. The rest of this video is just cleaning up the spreadsheet with a look at the Google Sheets version at the end so you can stop watching now if you're confident in your ability to format Excel. First, we'll move the second graph into a more reasonable location. Then, we'll put on a title and axis labels. Next, we'll format our lines. Dashed magenta for the upper and lower data bounds, dashed blue for the upper and lower functional bounds, and orange for the best fit line. Next, we'll fix the sig figs to more reasonable values. Then repair the number formatting on the graph by setting the format to general. Then back to sig figs. Now let's bold our answers, the slope and intercept, and the confidence intervals on them. If you are obsessive, you can add some super and subscripts. Finally, here is the equivalent in Google Sheets. All of the functions are there, but plotting is painful. As mentioned, we have dots for our bounds lines. The most painful thing is that all of the x values for all of the plots have to be in the same column, and you just leave things blank where you don't want them to plot. Google, you're about 30 years behind on features. How about fixing things?